Hello and welcome to Living Word, growing a family that experiences every promise of God. You're listening to another life-changing word from Pastor Scott Anderson. For more information, visit our website at livingwordonline.com. We're on um, just a, a very exciting series called Unmasked, Getting Down to the Real You. Not the you that you put on when you go to the office, not the you that you put on when you walk through even these doors or family gatherings or wherever you go, not the you you put on when your spouse says something that annoys you, not the you that you put on when somebody cuts you off in traffic, not the mask that we put on, but getting down to the real you. The enemy knows the power behind the you God designed. And if he can keep you at a young age, he works very tirelessly to get you to mask up. What does he do? Hurts and pains and people rejecting because we desire to be accepted. And the only way we thought was we had to have coping mechanisms. And so we had to put masks on to get accepted by this group and had to be something different to be in this group. And they didn't like me for who I was, and so I'm going to have to change for him. I'm going to have to change for her. And so we have all of these coping mechanisms, all these masks that we put on. But with the mask, I lack peace and I lack the joy and I lack the fulfillment. And my life doesn't seem to be going to the level in which I, I believe that God wants wants it to go. And it's because I'm not me. I'm not the me that God designed me to be. And the funny thing is about the mask is the mask attracts to me exactly what I don't want to have in my life. You put a mask on, and it's just a bitterness mask because of the hurts of all the people that have hurt you over the years. And so you want to be walled off and bitter. I don't want to be hurt no more. But then you get around people with your bitter attitude and they end up rejecting you not because of who you are, but because of the mask that you're wearing. And it's just a cycle that keeps you. You're like, well, I just got to keep this on because people keep rejecting me. Anger and, and frustration that you have and, and, and depression or whatever mask that you put on and go into your day is just cycling through. And you put your shy mask on as you go on because, you know, you've been hurt in the past. And people have walked away and dad walked away. And so you got your little mask of shyness that you put on. Hey, thank because you, so you don't want to be rejected. And you walk in a room and you sit off in the corner and you don't say hi, and you got a little frown on your face, and because I, I don't want to be rejected, and then you leave there, and you go, well, nobody's friendly, and nobody's friendly at that place whatsoever, and see, your mask, being afraid of being rejected, caused you to be rejected. It just brings across into your life everything that you don't want it to bring to your life. I was on Wednesday, I'm on East Coast time still, so I got up at like 4.30 in the morning, and uh, got studying done, and showered up, got cleaned up for the day, and I still had about 20 minutes left, and I thought, you know what, I'm going out on the boat tomorrow, I'm taking Heath, or Peyton out for his birthday, and so when I go out, just make sure the boat's ready, make sure the engine's, the battery's not dead, and so I, I walked out and walked through the grass, and I got to the side of the yard that we haven't finished yet, and because uh, Holly can't see it, and so it's on the side, but remember, we had like a Noah's flood for like two days. And so it, the mud was unbelievable how much mud was there. And I'm all cleaned up. I don't get muddy. And so I, I had to take some, some, some of the bricks that are left over from other things that we did. And I got to put them down and get another one. And I step on this one. And then, then I got to put one. And then I got to go back. And I get it all the way over to the rock area where the boat is at. And so I get all the way over there. I'm still clean. It's got it looking good, right? And so... I get over to the boat. Well, the stupid cover that I have in the boat had filled up with all the water. And so I stand up there. And as I got up there, smell like poo. It's just, it just such an aggressive, and it was aggressive. You know that wet, aggressive, fresh poo smell? Like it was so, and I'm like, what in the world? And so I'm looking at the water. I'm like, well, how would the dog get up here? Right? Is he shooting it up, lobbing it up into, like, I don't, I don't even know how would he even get up there. And so I'm like, and I'm thinking of the water. And so I got to be careful because I got to lift it up and get all the water to dump out of the, 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 the tarp area thing without getting any of it on me because I'm all, you know, dressed and looking good. And I get it all out and, and I'm like, it still smells, it's still strong. So I climb up on the boat and I'm walking around and it smells. Everywhere I go, it smells. And it's not getting any stronger. It's got to be real close to me. And so I hop down on the seat, and I'm walking up here, and I'm looking, and I get down here, and then I come over here, and I get up on this area, and I'm like, I don't know, where in the world does the smell come from? I sit down, and I put my hand like this, and then it's, it's like mud. I'm like, well, how did the mud get up here? And I'm like, oh, my God, it's poo. Why is there poo? And then I'm sitting on poo, and then I looked, and everywhere I walked was poo. It was on my shoe. <laughs> Not ready for my day anymore, heads up. And this is what we do with our, our mask. We think, we, 
Things in life stink and things in life smell. And I go over here and I'm like, well, why does this smell? Maybe it's them. Maybe it's this. Maybe it's my job. Maybe it's my boss. Not realizing that the poo is the mask that you are wearing. Well, come on, somebody. Wherever you go, the smell is following you. And we got to get rid of the poo mask. Come on, turn your neighbor and say, get rid of the poo mask. Get rid of the poo mask so that I can enjoy what God wants me to enjoy and have the peace. Got a quote here I want to throw up from uh, Jim Morrison from The Doors. The most important kind of freedom is to be what you really are. You trade in your reality for a role. You give up your ability to feel, and in exchange, you put on a mask. And that's what the enemy wants you to do. He doesn't want you to be who you are. He wants you to give up your ability to feel, to be, able to, right, to be able to have peace and the joy. And I have to go out in the world in order to be accepted. I can be something different than what I was created. But God created you as a masterpiece, just the way that you are. He was in love with what he created. And it is that in which he wants to go forth into your day, into your week, into your year, finding out and discovering the real you. Last week, we studied the, uh, Jacob. We were going through Jacob because of anything. Jacob, we can all identify with some area of Jacob. And he had the mask on. He had a dad that didn't accept him. He was unacceptable. So he spent 66 years of his life trying to earn his dad's acceptance, trying to mask up. And if I can be something different than I am, maybe then I'll get the blessings. He even dresses up as, as Esau, trying to get the blessings, which then causes a whole mess. And now he's now got to run for 21 years. And you see what the mask has done to his life. And the mask that he put on, the mask of deceiver he put on, followed him wherever he went. And it seemed like anyone he got around was deceiving him. And so the seed that he sowed with the mask he put on created the world and the confusion that he hated that he was experiencing because of the mask. And so we were going through the three points last week. Today, we're going to add two more points. Number one is we got to identify the fact that we have a, a mask. We have to accept and admit, I got masks. This isn't who I'm supposed to be. This is not me. This is the mask. Number two, Jacob separated himself from the mask, got himself alone with God. And when we're separated, we're alone with God. I, when I separate, I can say, wait a second, that's not me. That's not who I am. I'm something different in Christ Jesus. I'm not an angry person. I am not an arrogant person. I am not, right? I'm not a bitter person. That's not who I am. Those are the masks that I've been wearing. And number three, we found out that then I use the word of God to say, not who I was, but who I am. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. I am a conqueror. I am, right? I can overcome whatever the world puts in front of me. And you begin to say, I am positive. I'm not negative. I'm not depressed. I am a person full of joy and full of happiness. And I begin to change my my I am statements by battling it with the word of God, knowing that the mask that I put on. This morning, I, uh, this, is this morning story, got up and, and, and Holly wasn't feeling too hot and so she needed a couple things from the store. I got up early and so it's all right. I'm on East Coast time. I got time. I'm studying, but I'm like, all right, I'll run up to the Walmart real quick. It's 6.15 in the morning. I should be able to get in and get out really quick. And so I get down to the Walmart and I get my items and I go to get in line. At 6.22, I get in line. There's five people in front of me in both lines. What are you people doing? It's six in the morning. What are you doing at the store? It's six in the morning. Right? Go back to bed. Right? Sleep in. Get ready for church. Don't be here. So, but you know what? See, I have to identify one of my masks are is impatience. I have an impatient mask. I, love, I throw this on because my time is more important than anybody else. But what happens with my impatience is that by the time I get up there, right, wherever it is, and I have to tell people, and I, and I hi, stuff, and stuff, right? And then people are like, hey, you're from a Livingwood Bible Church. And then it, it's not a good impression. Because I'm the impression, right? I had a, 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 there's a lady actually works at Starbucks, and so she was at a, a visitor thing. And, and, I, and I go, oh, I come through there. I said, how do I do? She's like, you're good most of the time. I don't want to be good most of the time. I don't want to be that pastor. Amen? I want to be good all the time. I want to be a great positive. I want people not to go, yeah, don't go to that church. He is, right? Was, that's not what I want to be. And so I put a smile on my face, and I'm just taking the line. It took 20 minutes. The guy in front of me, he goes to pay, and he starts to write on this piece of paper. I don't know what this currency is. I, I, I don't know what in the world he's doing. I, later, I found out it's called a check. I didn't know that we still did these things. What, did he ride in with his horse and buggy to get some feed and twine? I, I don't even know what in the world. A check. I mean, a check. And I guess for Walmart to take a check, this is a big ordeal. 
they have like a big machine and they, it's going through back and then she's got a computer and she's got to type in all of this information. There was like a urine test. There was like, there was so much that he had to do. And I just stood there. I'm not going to put on that mask. I'm going to smile and I'm going to make it right. And I get all the way through and woo. Ah, that was good. I was good. I was good. I was happy. That was, I, and I felt better when I left there, right? And so then I gotta go, I'm going to go get Holly's coffee. It's, right, it's now 640-something, 6.43. It's early. There's three cars in line at Starbucks in front of me. Just three. 20 minutes later. 20 minutes. Now, old Scott's mask, the impatient mask, when I would get up there, thinking that I'm trying to be a great leader, I would tell him, hey, you guys got to do better. You guys are, you're, you're better than this. You can hustle, you can think, you can plan ahead. I think I'm being inspirational. In the back, they're spitting in Holly's coffee. You're right? So, I'm not changing anybody. I'm not making it. They don't walk away and go, man, that was inspirational. That little guy in the car, really? Right? No. no. So I smile. Hey, have a great day. Be blessed. I drive away. How many people know? I felt a whole lot better than the way I used to with the mask. The mask is not who I am. Who I am is what I was today. It took a little self-control. And for many of you out there not putting on the mask that usually gets you all upset and gets you mad and gets you all annoyed, we got to learn not to put those masks on. Number four. Come on, somebody out there. Come on, if I can do it. I'm, I'm growing in the midst of the series on my own. Number four is we got to discover the root of the mask. It's the root. It's not the action. It is what's behind the action. What behind that causes me to act this way? You get home and your spouse says something and boom, it is on and right and you're going and you threw the mask on so you got the mask on. Everybody's masked up for the night and, 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 and what was the root behind why you did that. See, it, when, you, when you cut off a weed at the top, I don't know if knows, it just comes right back. You can cut it off, it come back, it come back. It, it, see, I think it even grows stronger when it comes back. It keeps growing and growing. It's not until you get down to the root that you can remove it. And until we can get to the root behind why we act the way that we act, once I get to the root, I'm like, okay. See, you deal with it and you put your anger mask on in your life. And so you're like, well, I'm just gonna, not going to be angry anymore. And so you get up and you're trying not to be angry, but then somebody cuts you off and the boss and it's building and building until you just blow. You just blew. You tried so hard not to put the anger mask on because you're trying to deal with the behavior and not going to the root. The root is probably sometime in your past you lost control. It might have been an accident, it might have been a circumstance when you were a child, something happened where you felt like you had no control, and so when I have no control, now when I feel out of control and life's out of control and things I can control, my way to respond to it is my anger. The anger is not the root, the loss of control, and what you have to realize is life is out of control, but God is in control. And so in the midst of things that are not going right, I just have to go, well, God, you are in control. You're the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. I know that you got this because every day there's going to be a whole lot of things that you have no power to control. Amen. And so I got to get to the roots. And once I get to the root, I can deal with that. I had woken up and I went to walk and my, my ankle, it felt, it felt funny. It didn't, it didn't hurt. But it just felt uncomfortable. It just was weird. It was like a weird ankle. And so I'm walking. I'm like, why do I got a weird ankle? And so I did that for a couple of weeks with my weird ankle. And I'm like, well, this isn't right. It just doesn't feel right. And, and, and it stopped me from working out for 25 years. And so, no, I just... So, <laughs> so I, I, went, I went to my doctor, and he, he sent me to a foot specialist. And so I was in the waiting in the room, waiting for the foot specialist. I don't know what they're doing, but they got you in that room forever. And I'm waiting. And then all of a sudden, the door opens, and here comes, I swear to you, I thought it was a kid. A kid came in wearing a white doctor thing. And he come in, and come on in. And he's like, hey, how are you doing? And I said, hey, I'm just wondering. I got meetings and stuff, because I still had the inpatient mask on. And I'm like, hey, uh, when's the doctor coming? And so then now this kind of put him off, and now he's got to put a little mask on. He's got a little deep voice. He's, like, he's trying to be all deep. He's like, I am the doctor. And I'm thinking to myself, I thought it was bring your kid to, to, to work day. I didn't, I'd like, I, like, you're like 15 years old. Mommy dropped you off today. I don't know what happened. And so now he's masked up, and I'm kind of masked up. And so, and I found this out about myself, and I'm, I'm, I don't want to say it because I know there's some of you out here that are going to call me this. I don't like to be called champ. I didn't know that until just now. I don't like it. I don't know why. And I know some of you are going to call me champ now for the rest of my life just to, 
It would be funny, but it, and so he's all, hey, champ, why don't you hop up on there? And just the way he said it, just, I like it. I hop up on there. He's like, all right, champ. And he, he's like, so what's going on? And I said, well, my ankle, it, it kind of hurts. He's like, all right, well, let's get that little shoe off. He called my show little. <laughs> Somebody who hasn't shaved yet is calling my shoe little. That's fine. I'm okay. I'm unoffendable. I'll take it. And so he moves the little the thing around a little bit, and he does some stuff on it. He pushes on it, and he steps back. And he's a big sigh. And he goes, well, do you want me to be a straight shooter with you? No, lie. Just make some stuff up. I don't, I don't understand that. Nobody, the doctor goes, yeah, just make some stuff up, and we'll figure it out. No, of course, yeah, tell me the truth. He goes, here's the thing. Your ankle is old. I don't know if you knew this, my ankle's the same age as me. The ankle's not a different age. It's not like my ankle's 93. I was born with a 93, you know, 48 year old ankle 48 years ago. I, uh, it's my, so when you talk about my ankle, you're talking about me. I said, what do you mean my ankle's old? He goes, it's just old, it's just wore out. And it's just, and I'm like, what are you saying I have to just live with it? He goes, well, yeah, I guess. I said, what are you, isn't there operations? He goes, well, yeah, on like a 25 year old ankle, but on that, I don't know. I'm like, why can't we operate on the ankle? He's like, well, it's kind of like, you ever had like an old beat up car that's not worth a whole lot? <laughs> he said, you don't put an interior in that. I'm like, well, thank you for your Joel Osteen speech here. I'm feeling real good about myself. I said, well, is there physical therapy I could do? He's like, I guess, I guess we could do some. I said, okay. So I get physical therapy and I get, how long do I have to do physical therapy? He goes, how long? He goes, You'll have to do it until you're, you and your ankle die. You do it forever. That's how long you're going to have to do it. And so me and my old ankle, you know, we hobbled out of that place. I'm mad at my old ankle. Why has he got to be old? I don't know why he's an old ankle. And the next day I'm talking to some buddies of mine, and I forgot that one of my buddies was an unemployed physical therapist. And so I'm telling him, and he's like, well, hold on. Let me take a look at your, at your ankle. And, and so he gets down, and he's only about five seconds on my ankle. And then he goes behind me, and he has me lean over, and now he's dealing with my back. And I'm like... Hey, that's not even close to my ankle. I'm kind of seeing why you're unemployed here. I, I'm, just, I'm just guessing. This is a pretty big sign. He says, no, no, no. Have you ever heard of referral pain? I said, well, what's referral pain? He said, well, here's the way that they described it to me in, in, in medical school. They said, it's like having the, the drywall, having a leak in your drywall, right? And you're like, oh, then there must be a leak in the roof right above it. And he's like, no, the leak, probably any, any good roofer would tell you, it could be anywhere in the house. And what happens, the water gets in and it travels along the beams, and then this is just where it is. And so the, you have to go to the root. You have to, in order to find the leak, you have to go to the root. And see, the same thing for you and I. We got referrals in our life. And so you think that the anger is the problem. No, the referral pain is over here. And I have to deal with the root of losing control. The root of why I, you, you might be dealing with arrogance and it just comes out. Could be a root over here, a referral pain of low self-esteem. If I'll deal with the low self-esteem, come on, somebody out there. If I deal with the low self-esteem, then the arrogance goes away. If I deal with the unforgiveness that I have in my heart, then the bitterness attitude of mass that I put on just naturally goes away. For me to try and force myself not to be bitter and not to, not to have that little scowl on my face, man, it's impossible. But if I'll go to the root of the referral, then all of a sudden, oh, I got the joy of the Lord that begins to go wherever I go. Now here's, I got three, um, three messages this week through Facebook of people who said, okay, how do I know if, if what I'm doing is the real me or not? How do I know? You know, sometimes I think that it's me, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's a mask that I wear. And so here is the Scotty's test to find out if the mask or what you're doing is you or just a mask that you put on. And we find that in Matthew 7:16. Matthew 7:16. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit. But a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. It's the fruit test. The, when I go forth into my world and my life, and I'm doing me, right, in a sense, does it create anger and hostility and fights and discord? Well, that's not me. 
Because the me, when I am really me, then the fruits of the Spirit will be evident. It'll be love. It'll be joy. It'll be peace. Come on. Somebody, it'll be patience for Scotty. Right? It'll be long-suffering. This is what will come out. And so when you're with your spouse, and it's boom and fighting, blah, blah, blah. And she said it. I said it. We got right, right. That's, that's, that's not me. That's not me. That's a mask that I've done to be able to, what I thought was to cope. But if I learn to remove the mask, every time I got something that begins to produce something that is bad fruit, the Bible says cut it down. I have to remove that mask, separate myself from that mask, use the word of God against that mask until I can go forth into my workplace, into my day, into my life, on the road, on the 202, at the Walmart at 620 in the morning, and I can have and leave love and joy and peace and happiness. And when I leave in my wake, in my wake, wherever I go, people's lives have gotten better. That's the wake that you were designed to be with your kids, with your family, with your in-laws, with, with your parents. That is who you were designed to be. Number five. Number five, we'll close with this one right here. Go where you're celebrated. I got this literally right before I got up at the 11 o'clock service last week. I was going through my notes, and uh, we're going to hit back to the scripture that we started off with last week, which was Genesis 25, 28. And I was reading this. It was like I went, whoa. And I, then I was like, oh, I can't wait to talk about it today. And the guy's like, no, no, no. We'll do it next week. We'll put it in next week. So I, I was reading about being accepted and how Jacob was unacceptable to, to his dad. See, that's what we're trying to do. We're going through life, and we want people to accept us. We want to be acceptable. And so this popped out. Go where you're celebrated. And Isaac... We saw last week, loved Esau because Esau was that Gaston type, right? And so he was a big and rugged and manly. But Rebecca loved Jacob. Jacob spent 66 years of his life trying to earn the acceptance of someone who would never accept him. He was trying to get accepted by somebody who saw him unacceptable. And I got to thinking, but why? Because this is the optimist in me. Why is he going after him? Why not just go where he's accepted? Why not put your time, your energy, and your resources going towards mom where you are loved and accepted just the way you are? See, that's a revelation for many of you out there that you're going and working and you're putting all your time trying to get over here to accept you. But you have to accept the fact that there are people in this world who will never accept you. You have to accept the fact that you are unacceptable to a group of people. It's just the way that it is. And the more successful you become and the more you begin to do and live in God's word and begin to rise to level to level in life, the more people will find you unacceptable. But you have to go towards those that accept you just the way that you are. You've got to be drawn to those. Well, I mean, we do. We try to make everybody like us. We think that we, there's a way somehow. I mean, people know that Jesus couldn't get everybody to like him. I'm just telling you, if anybody was acceptable, Jesus was pretty acceptable. The man walked around and he healed the blind. And he had got people who hadn't walked for 30 years to get up. He even brought dead people out of, out of the graves, right? And, and he preached in a good, encouraging word. And he brought happiness and joy wherever you go. And they killed him. And we think somehow that we can force people to accept us. And Jesus couldn't get everybody to accept him. You ain't going to get everybody to accept you either. And what did Jesus do? He had his 12. And even within the 12, he had his three. And he spent his time with those that found him acceptable. Go out in the world. Yeah, I get that. I have to go. You got to work your job and do those things. But those that I desire a relationship with are the ones that accept me exactly the way I am. I don't have to change nothing. They're nothing different. They come on somebody out there. They love you for who you are. Well, I got to act this way to be around this people. And I got to go clubbing if I want to be with these people. And I got to drink it up if I want to be with these people. And this is what is expected. And you got I to you sleep with your boyfriend because if I don't, then he's probably going to leave me and go find somebody else. Please go find somebody else because the person that God has for you is the one that says you are worth the wait. That if that's the desire of your house, heart, then I will lay down my life for you before we even get married. I will lay down that part for my life for you. That's the one that God has for you. Not the one that you're trying to get to accept you. Not the one that you're trying to get to love. And the friend that you spend your time and they never call you, but you're always calling them and you're always trying to hang out. And everything in life is trying to get them. And God's word is saying, no, go where you're accepted. And if nothing else, let me tell you this. You know who accepts you just the way you are? God always does. Come on, somebody out there. God always accepts you exactly where you are. You come into his house, you sit and you praise and worship and you feel the weight 
just lift off. And it didn't matter all the junk that you did all during the week and the mistakes that you made. God's arms, like the prodigal son, are wide open. Say, come on in. I accept you. Don't change nothing. I love you for who you are, the you that he created you to be. When I was in, well, I was in eighth grade. From fifth grade to eighth grade, my best friend was Tyrone. Tyrone was my best friend. And somehow we had made it into the in group. We were in, in eighth grade. We got to sit at the cool table. And so we were at the cool sitting table, and woo! Now, I was with them, but I really wasn't. You know what I'm saying? Like, they were the, the cool guys were over there, but I was at the table. Tyrone was at the table, and it was so cool. And uh, I remember the day. I mean, of course, it's one of those moments you remember your whole life. I just, I stood up, and when I stood up, I had knocked Greg's tray, and he was the super cool guy at the table, out of his hands, and his milkshake went all over him. And so Greg began to chant, get out of here, Scott. And then the whole table, even Tyrone, began to chant, get out of here, Scott. I know, it's a very sad story. And so I did. I just walked away. It was like a very, it was the saddest moment of my life up to that point. Can I say that? And so it was sad. And so the day was hard, and I, I went home, and the night, and my dad came in, and I told him the story. And he said to me, he says, well, they, they don't sound like good friends. And he said, tomorrow, don't go over by them. He said, go find, there's going to be somebody at the school who doesn't have a friend. Go find that person and be their friend. You know how many friends you need in this life to have a great time in school? You only need one. Go find one friend. So I did. Oh, they're all cool guys over there. And I just walked over. And over here was this guy, Greg. He was sitting by himself. And so I just went like here. And I went, hey. He was like, hey. And we already knew we were best friends right there. That's all guys need. We don't need all, have to find out your favorite color or if you like ponies. God, guys, just didn't find any of that. We just, we hung out. And then at lunch, I sat by him. Next day, we did the same thing. And then Friday, he invited me over to the house to hang out. And then we hung out on Saturday. And Greg became my best friend that year. And it's a funny thing, at the end of the year, Tyrone left that group. But I don't know why. Maybe something happened the same. And he began to hang out with me and Greg. Right? And we all became great buddies. And it was a great thing for me to learn at a young age that not to chase the popular, not to chase those that the world says is important, not to chase, I just need to go where I'm accepted. And there are those in this world, there are those in this church, this church is an accepting church. And I know you got people in your life that don't accept and you're trying, you're trying to win his heart and you're trying to this and you're trying to get everything, you're trying to get it all over here and you're trying to be accepted by those that'll never find you accepting. They'll never accept you no matter what you do. And if you'll just simply go like this and walk over and realize that you only need one. You only need one good friend. You only need God in your life who accepts you and loves you. And if you'll just go to where you're accepted, you get rid of all the stress and the worry. And you stop being. You know, the Bible says, don't be a man pleaser, but be a God pleaser. Don't be a, God, don't be a man pleaser. When I please God, God brings to me what I need. As long as I'm trying to please man, you can't even see who God has. You're trying to please the man over here, and God's got a perfect man over there that's going to love you just the way you are. Until you give up on those that will not accept you, you cannot even see the ones that will accept you the way that you are. And so I have to say no to the world and no to second best so that God can bring me his best into my life. Say no to the friends that are me and the friends that keep putting you down and the guy, right? And you begin to walk towards those that with open arms say, hey, you don't have to change nothing. I accept you just the way you are. Now I'm unmasked. And now I'm in the middle of a relationship that can grow. I'm in a relationship that can go the distance. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today. I know that God ministered some good stuff today as we were talking about being unmasked. Yeah, and, and what a great uh, message you were talking about. So, so but you I liked wanted, it. I, I wanted to ask you. You liked it. Yeah, I wanted to ask you. You usually a don't like my this. messages, but this one. Yeah. He's different. This one, this week in particular, you were really preaching what I believe was truth. <laughs> that sounds so bad. That's so good. That's the loaded compliment. If you're enjoying He's this show, great every we have day. a sh we have a daily show called Wake Up. Yeah. I know I'm throwing it in there just because we're having fun. That's right. And we have fun on Wake Up. It's, we do a morning scripture morning every day. Subscribe. We need to be in the Word of God every morning, it's don't we? It's fun, yeah. And you'll like half of us that are on the show, 50% of us. 50%. You could draw a line straight across the guy on the left. You're really going to enjoy. <laughs> wait, wait. I'm on the left. <laughs> Other left. <laughs> the other left. Because <laughs> they're facing, anyways. Um, but but tell, tell me more about this. Uh, you were saying that, that we, we pursue the relationships that we're, we're celebrated in. Right. What if someone is not feeling celebrated in their marriage, though? 
Oh, then you, I think that as always that I'm not a God, I'm not a people pleaser, but instead I'm a God pleaser. That's right. And so then I begin to pursue this relationship. And when I pursue this relationship, and then I begin to take those masks off, God goes, as we said just last week, that God goes before and changes the Esau circumstance. And then all of a sudden, this relationship begins to be celebrated. That's right. God can heal your marriage. He's got favor for you. Amen. Yeah. All right. But, but we want you to, uh, uh, you know, you, did, were you ministered today? It's important. Give a gift. Jesus says it's better to give than to receive. And if you receive something, be generous. You can click somewhere on the screen here. It's going to be easy Over there, for you right to give. Here. Right there. Right here. Click there. <laughs> Make sure your tithe goes to your local church. That's so important. But help us uh, send this message around the you world. You always have a book at the end. So I have a. So on Amazon, you can find a Bible. A book. I don't you know. should order the Bible. It's the best book it's ever written. It, I believe it is the best book. They sold more copies of this than Harry Potter last year. Did you know that? Last year. And the year before, and the year before he that. Beats Harry, every, every year. He beats ever, Harry. He beats Harry oh, Potter. We'll see you next time. See you on Monday for Wake Up, Be Blessed.